Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service here at the KFAB studio, the penthouse studio high above Underwood Avenue. Glad you've joined us. This is the only show anywhere in the metro area that talks about business expansion, real estate construction, economic development, really anything related to Omaha becoming more vibrant, more prosperous, and and perhaps a little bit bigger. Thank you to our sponsors, Cheer Athletics, the nation's number one all-star cheer gym, located near highways 50 and 370, and Dingman's Collision Center with four metro area locations. And now, without any further ado, it's time to bring on my co-host, a man who is a legendary real estate deal maker in the flesh, Trenton Maggot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main control booth <laughs> at KFAB. Well, Good so Trenton, morning, Jeff. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, this has been a big week because we have a, a Brad Williams Grow Omaha Construction Update video. Always epic and always informative. If you go to growomaha.com, click on the construction videos, Brad Williams really gets around town. He's a man about town. He's a professional videographer, photographer, uh, helicopter, drone specialist, and he really knows the market as well. Yeah, so Brad does these videos throughout the year. They're sponsored by Leader Construction. And as Trent said, you can find them on the Gromaha website. Just uh, click on Shows, S-H-O-W-S, on the navigation bar in the drop-down window. You'll see construction video. And this month, he really focuses on uh, East Omaha. There are Millwork Commons, uh, projects downtown, um, some stuff out by 72nd and I-80. He's all over. And uh, if you haven't ever seen the videos, they're great because he just kind of gives you a video highlight of some of the construction projects that are underway, tells you a little bit about them. Uh, they last about nine minutes, and it'll be a fast It'll be a fast nine minutes. Jeff, I have a challenge for our listeners, uh, our great listeners and even the average ones. Okay, what is it? Go to your phone. Go to gromaha.com. Go to the weekly market report where it says subscribe. You can put your children, your friends, your parents, anybody that you think needs to be more informed or should be informed or would enjoy – what restaurants are coming and going, what development projects are happening, what's happening with our great city, and you can sign other people up. We don't do anything with the names other than send them a Thursday email with all this great free information. Just first name, last name, and email address, and it's like a free gift to your friends, and they're going to sound a lot smarter, too, and they're easier to hang out with. And for purposes of complying with the United States Can Spam Act, we don't officially recommend you sign other people up, but I guess we have no way of knowing if you do. Right. And uh, of course, you got their permission. Yeah, got their permission. Permission. Okay, let's go into our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. They know mortgages. They've known mortgages for more than three decades. And if you are thinking about getting a new version of the American dream, one of the first things you want to do is talk to Holly Schneidewind or one of her team members over at Eagle Mortgage. Uh, You can find them at the office, which is 114th and Davenport, just south of Dodge, or call them, or you know, a lot of times the easiest thing is to go online, eaglemortgagecompany.com. But they are a mortgage broker, which means they are not beholden to any bank. They are not captured by a bank. Or a lender. They, uh, they they can shop the market, uh, get the one that's right for you, and, and they have a quite the track record of doing it. Look, for most people, uh, houses are the most expensive things they buy. And if you're thinking about possibly getting a new one, make Eagle Mortgage one of your first meetings. Eagle Mortgage Company. Even if you're getting a used house. Uh, dot com. Um, well, I think most people buy used houses, don't they? Yeah. Uh, lightly used. Um, um Okay, so let's go into our news of the week content. And the first thing on the docket, uh, Mutual of Omaha's uh, future skyscraper headquarters. Uh, interesting feature about it uh, this week by WWT. They talked to the developer. And something interesting that came out of the story, the concrete shear tower, that's the central core that holds the elevator shafts and the stairwells and all that sort of thing, should reach 200 feet within six months from now. Wow. And 300 feet by the end of the year. Now, when it's complete in 2026, it'll be 677 feet tall, which is, as we've talked about before, the tallest building in a multi-state region. But, um, you know, interesting, if it's going to be 200 within six months, 
I would. I, it might actually be more than 300 by the end of the year. I'd love to see that. You would love to see that. And all you have to do if you want to see it is go drive downtown. And uh, when you're in the 14th and Farnham, uh, 15th and Douglas area, just look up. Um, it is coming along pretty nicely. The Nebraska Department of Transportation is receiving a $15.3 million um, collection of federal grants for improvements to 21 airports across the state. Here in Omaha, we're most interested in two airports, Epley, uh, which will receive over a third of that money, $5.37 million. That will go toward the $65 million glass canopy project that is currently being installed over the Terminal Drive. That's a, that is a, a much bigger project than people think because it won't even be done until early next year. And then the other Omaha airport, the Millard Airport, will receive $293,000 to repave uh, for repaving of some of the taxiway. So um, now $5.3 million doesn't sound like a whole hell of a lot. When you considered two weeks ago, we were talking about the $950 million terminal expansion. But as they say, every little bit helps. There's no question about it. I, and kudos to the Omaha Airport Authority and everyone down there. During this construction period, it's pretty slick, the pickup and drop off that the inside – it's not bad. Inside the cover. It's not much of a walk to go across the, the street. You got the, the covered walkway or the sky bridge, whatever you want to call it. So they're pretty organized now. You just got to follow the signs. Well, uh, interestingly, uh, the World Herald had an article, I believe it was Sunday, in which they named former retired Kiwit CEO Ken Stenson as Midlander of the Year. Very well deserved, by the way. But in the article, it was talking about uh, the downtown parks. Now, Ken Stenson, along with uh, Mogens Bai, uh, who is the former Valmont CEO, those were the the visionaries and the movers, shakers, the driving forces behind the three big riverfront parks, $350 million renovation. But here's the thing in the article that jumped out at me, Trenton. Two million people have already visited the three newly renovated riverfront parks, and more than 40,000 have visited the Heartland of America Park's skating ribbon just in the time since it converted from roller skating to ice skating. I I believe it, and I think that this, these are stakeholders, these are families, uh, foundations that literally got together, sat around a table probably, and said, let's each put in $50 million and give it back to our – and it doesn't matter whether they have a billion dollars, multi-billion dollars, or a lot of money. They're doing it. They're doing it while they're still alive for the most part, and they're champions of our city – and they are pretty low key if you think about it. It's called the Riverfront Park. It's not called the Stinson Park. It's not called the the Bowens By Park. It's, mm -hmm. it's the Omaha River City or Omaha uh, Riverfront Park. Yeah, we are so fortunate in this town. And I know regular listeners hear us say this a lot, but don't get tired of saying it and don't uh, get complacent about it. We are very, very fortunate to have an unusually large and dedicated philanthropic community. A lot of business leaders or people from families that have had successful businesses in some cases many years ago that have just stayed very loyal very active and and it's shocking how many of our blockbuster projects are uh largely or in some cases almost 100 percent privately funded by people that are doing this just for the good of the community when i make donations i i go by the name anonymous that's you? Yeah. Okay, you're prolific. And then finally, Metropolitan Area Planning Agency has released uh, a report, and it was the uh, big story in uh, this week's newsletter, if you want to go take a look at it. Um, but uh, kind of a couple of cool things. So first of all, uh, it looked at uh, growth of traffic in the metro area from 2020 to 2022. Now, you might be thinking, it's February of 24. Well, it takes a while to compile this stuff. Um, now, 2020, traffic fell off a cliff because that was the pandemic year, and it took a while to come back. But nevertheless... Everybody is riding the, the uh, city buses. Nevertheless, the region's traffic did increase 13.4% uh, during that period of time. And um, the areas of town that had the largest traffic uh, increases, and, and you'll find this interesting were 
Um, some areas in far southwest Sarpy County where there's been a lot of new development. And um, one that might surprise you is uh, some of the stuff in north central Douglas County along Interstate 680, uh, say from Dodge all the way up north. And um, another thing from the report that jumped out at me is, is kind of significant. It For years and years and years, the busiest interchange in the state of Nebraska had always been the Kennedy Freeway I-480, I-80 interchange. Well, the I-680, 80 interchange has passed it up. And this is uh, our chance to play Stump the Trenton. Yes. Trenton. This has not been pre-planned. I nope. have not been given the answers. You have not, unless you read the article. Um, how many cars per day go through the I-680-80 interchange in 2022? 2022. See, see I had all the 21 numbers. Um, let's see, 22. I will say, I have no idea, but... Seventy-five thousand. You're 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 way low, and that, and therefore you'll be thoroughly impressed by this number: two hundred and thirty-one thousand cars a day. Holy moly! That's a lot of cars um, to go through the I six eighty. Well, I think you're talking about different different uh, makes of cars. That's right. Okay, so <laughs> with that, we're going to end the news of the week. Brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, EagleMortgageCompany.com. Going to take our first break of the hour, and when we come back, Trent and I are going to be talking. Um, about streetcars, about the local economy, and whatever else. So stay with us. We promise it'll be interesting. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals sitting right next to Trent and Magid. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and our relatively new title sponsor, Cheer Athletics local uh, chapter of Cheer Athletics owned by our very good friends, Craig and Tiffany Wolf. Uh, Cheer Athletics is an all-star champ. There, there are different types of, of cheer leagues for competitive cheer, but the one that is generally considered the best, if you will, is all-star cheer. And the Cadillac of the all-star cheer world is Cheer Athletics. It started in Dallas, and then it's expanded. Omaha was the 12th location when uh, Craig and Tiffany opened it a couple years ago. And uh, a lot of you are you know, thinking, it's Cheer Athletics, we've heard of that. Well, that's because for the last couple of years, they were sponsoring uh, the Grow Omaha Eats restaurant reviews with Sarah Baker Hanson. They've switched to the show. I think part of it is that Craig is a big Girl Omaha fan. He just loves the radio show. He's been a guest co-host a few times, and so I think he thought I might, I might rather, uh, I might rather sponsor the show and and all that. So, so we're exa- exa- very excited to have them here. But most importantly, if you are a parent or a grandma or a grandpa, and uh, the kiddos need something to challenge themselves. Um, to, to learn how to excel and to compete and to develop and become better people, look to Cheer Athletics. The Omaha location is in Papillion, highways 50 and 370 just to the southwest. Jeff, if um, if that's elite cheer, the, the, the pinnacle of the cheerleading world, and it's a very growing industry, that means that that is the type of cheer that we're most likely not to be able to get into. You and me? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have the flexibility – uh, plus, I would I would love to see those cheerleaders try to throw you in the air or put me on top of the uh, pyramid. I'm thinking you might be more of like the anchor, Dang, the base. Yeah. At any rate, with that, we got a couple things we want to uh, bring to your attention today. And the first one, we are making progress on the streetcar, uh, the Omaha Streetcar Committee, the City of Omaha, if you will. Received a bid for $47.6 million for six streetcars. Now, interestingly, this comes from a company called CAF, based in Spain, the country of Spain, España, if you will. And uh, this company has a U.S. division. They supply rail cars, rail system equipment. Um, They're going to, according to the bid, produce streetcars for Omaha that are very similar to streetcar systems they did in Kansas City and Cincinnati. Uh, These cars will be about 77 feet long. There's usually more than one of them together because they have that flexible middle thing, kind of like the orbit buses, I guess. They go up to 43 miles per hour. Now, sometimes people say, 43 miles per hour? That's not very fast. It is for a streetcar. Remember, streetcars are not 
a light rail. They are they are they're not commuter rail. Streetcars are designed for dense places that uh, take you from block to block to block. It's why you know a lot of times people say, why don't they extend the streetcar and have it go all the way out to Gretna and I can get on it and commute to work. Street that's more like a light rail that Omaha's not big enough to have right now. Streetcars are more like take you from this urban block to a couple other urban blocks away. So it's it's perfect for where it's at and you don't need it to go terribly fast. Is it called it heavy rail or is it Heavy rail would be Union Pacific. Okay. Um, you know, freight trains. So this and is medium rail? Things like that. Streetcars are not any, well, they are on a rail, but they're not called like light rail or anything like that. Um, maybe they're like super light. Feather, feather. Featherweight. Featherweight rail. Um, they're welterweight uh, rail. But at any rate, um, streetcar actual real construction should begin this summer. Now, it, there are so many pieces involved in this. If you've been downtown, you may have noticed little pockets of work being done on the Farney <coughs> corridor. That's what I call Farnham and Harney together, the Farney corridor. And you got to be careful because some people think that's an inappropriate word. But the Farney corridor, and so far a lot of work with underground utilities, uh, seeing what the what utilities are under the lines, soil conditions. But uh, some of the actual, I'm told, uh, actual concrete work will actually start as early as the summer. And this project is bigger than some people might think because both the Harney and Farnham Street bridges over Interstate 480. Kaboom! Gone, rebuilt as part of this project. Wow, that is no small task to rebuild those those bridges. So it's coming, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's controversial, but I also know we need to give it a chance because we've already been through the public comment period. We've been through uh, a lot of controversy, and and uh, we've been talking about this for twenty five years. And let's see how it goes. Let's be positive and and. Uh, See what happens. We should have built it 20 years ago, but we didn't. We can't undo the past, so now we can just make a, a wonderful, outstanding system that we have right now. So let's talk about the Nebraska economy, Trenton. World Herald had an interesting article yesterday. Uh, headline is, uh, Lack of Workers and Housing Throttle. I love that word, throttle. Yes. Are throttling Nebraska's economic growth. So the the state uh, looks like the Nebraska Department, or rather the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce, um, brought in uh, some guru to talk about the economy. Unfortunately, the stuff he said, I think we kind of already knew this, um, but um, we we just don't have enough human beings. Um, the unemployment rate is one of the lowest in the country. Nebraska has one of the highest rates of people who work more than one job. So. We have people are pulling their weight here and 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 really working hard, and it's still not enough. Um, and 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 the other thing that's causing the problem is while Nebraska housing is still very affordable compared to a lot of states that are home to very large metropolitan areas or in coastal areas, it's a lot more expensive than it was a couple of years ago. So you you put together this this people shortage and the recent increase in, in housing prices. And it's been tricky to get uh, to get enough workers. I, I'm working on it. It's coming up in my mind. I'm, I think we have a solution in that instead of we're not a sanctuary state and instead of illegal immigrants, open your houses up, ladies and gentlemen. If you have an extra room, if you have a cottage in your backyard, if, if you've got any finished space in your house, Allow graduates, allow educated people that are employable, and offer them free housing. And uh, then they come to our state, they get on their feet, and then they can afford a house someday. And that way, it, uh, it, it cures that. They save money, and we bring in population. That's a great idea, folks. In fact, Trenton has generously um, agreed to have his house be the very first one. And uh, he is willing uh, to take uh, five or six of these graduate students. And Call me on Jeff's cell phone number. And Ed. here's Trenton's address. <laughs> 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 the person who lives with Trenton is in the studio right now, and she didn't seem to like that comment very much. But uh, interestingly, though, Trenton, one of the things that the consultant said is, uh, what can you do to attract more legal uh, immigrants, more legal migrants uh, to the metropolitan area. And along those same lines, purely coincidental, 
uh, in the Girl Omaha newsletter that comes out Thursday afternoon, there was a, uh, a bit in there about Topeka, Kansas, which is aggressively trying to recruit uh, new immigrants, primarily from Spanish speaking countries, because Topeka, well, Topeka, is, it's, it's, they got a tough thing going. I, I've been there a few times and it's, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the place, but and I'm not trying to be mean or anything like, but there's nothing really great about the place either. And so uh, they have a much, much, much bigger challenge to recruit people than we do here in Omaha. And and they've got 6,000 some empty jobs and low unemployment. So they've just kind of gone very aggressive with that. Um, there are a lot of good things, though, going on. What in, are they doing? Um, yeah, just a campaign to try and to try and convince uh, people that are recent arrivals from Spanish-speaking countries primarily. It doesn't have to be a Spanish-speaking country, but that's what they're targeting, probably because they have a lot of people who speak Spanish. There's a lot of ways that Omaha, and I know we've talked to the Chamber of Commerce, Heath Mello and uh, uh, City Council and people like that, uh, our friend Brinker Harding. There's a lot of ways, and, and hopefully they're working on ways to whether it's forgivable loans to help with housing or pay off education or something. If someone comes here and stays for a couple of years, hopefully they bring their families and their their um, spouses get jobs and things like that. So we'll see. But I think that we spend so much time in making this a great community, which it is, but we also have to spend time not making it 2 million people. But Jeff and I, I think our, our comfort level is what, 1.3 million, right? Well, that, you're talking about for the Omaha metro area? Yeah. yeah, I think that would be kind of the sweet spot. What are we, 975 now or something? Yeah, 980, somewhere in that range. Um, the article did say a few things, though, Nebraska has going for it, namely the fact that it has a phenomenal and very uh, recession-resilient economy. We talked about the state having the one of the nation's largest ag and food processing sectors, strong manufacturing base, surprisingly strong tech and business service sectors. Surprising, I say, to people who are not from here. Um, other positives for the state economy include relative affordability and cost of living, cost of doing business, strong education, a relatively young population. It's younger than the national average and reasonably, quote, reasonably good roads and broadband infrastructure. The roads were better a month ago than they are right now. I will say that. Um, thanks to its younger population base, Nebraska's projected population of uh, working class or working age people is expected, excuse me, is expected to grow 6% over the next decade. And then one other thing it mentioned, uh, growth in domestic product. Um, the Omaha metro area has the second highest GDP growth in the nation in 2022 behind only Austin, Texas. And that's good company wow. to be in. Yeah. So, but we do have to, we have to keep working on that, keep recruiting people and, and keep creating amenities like streetcars like soccer stadiums, like billion-dollar airport terminal expansions, like entertainment uh, and parks and, uh, parks and recreational events and, and all that stuff because it, it attracts people. All right, time for us to break for the news and the weather. you got to be informed, and so we're going to step aside and make that happen. When we come back, though, we'll have plenty of other things to talk about. You don't want to miss any of it. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center on News Radio 1110 KFAB. No offense, Emory, but I think we should ban Groundhog Day. That is the absolute number one most worthless holiday for anyone that doesn't live anywhere near Pennsylvania. Our, why do we? Why do we care? It's, it's, it, why do we have that? Our friend John Blumenthal at Baird Home uh, posted on Facebook. He's he's a serial poster, and he was saying that he couldn't believe that his Law office was open. On Groundhog Day? Yeah. That is pretty insensitive of them. Well, welcome back to the show. It's brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center. Um, if you um, had a little trouble with that, that bout of horrific snow and um, historic cold that we had last month and uh, someone ran into you, no problem. Just get over to Dingman's Collision Center and um, and, and they'll take good care of it for you. And you might be thinking, well, which, where do I, where is Dingman's? Well, it's close to you because they have four metro area locations, one in Papillion. They have one on Saddle Creek Road in the urban core, uh, one at 120th and Maple, and the other one is just a little bit southwest of Oakview Mall. So they take good care of you. 
at all four of them. Just ask Trenton. He's He's been to all of yeah, them. I've got a punch card. He's got a punch card. My fifth card. one is, is still not free, but uh, they give me a good deal. <laughs> yeah, he's got a loyalty uh, membership. Um, but it is time for our commercial real estate development spotlight of the week, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. Noddle Companies is making places like uh, Xarban Village and uh, the Builders District downtown, North downtown, where all sorts of fun stuff is happening. Tell you what, at Xarban Village, though, they've got uh, A Priori and and Status, the pre-loved handbag store, which is a very, very cool store. Lots of great restaurants. Uh, Xarban Village also has Inner Rail Food Hall. And uh, we do have a little news item there, Willie Dogs, uh, which is an outstanding hot dog place. I went and tried it like the first week they were open um, in the Interrail Food Hall. As of last night, they are now serving ice cream, so you can get a dog and some ice cream to go with it. And then also at Exarbon Village, uh, Backlot Tap House, which is uh, tied into the theater, the Exarbon Cinema right there in the middle of the village, will be on America's Best Restaurants February 7th. You can see it when it debuts on February 7th, right on Backlot's uh, Facebook page. Very cool. And so that's very cool. Of course, Backlot also has a second location in the ACX 12 Theater, uh, 204th Street between Harrison and Q. And that is your Noddle Company's Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight. If you want to learn more about Noddle Companies, uh, you check out their Facebook page or just go to noddlecompanies.com. Uh, Jay Noddle, who uh, runs the company, uh, been a guest on the show a number of times, and uh, you might see him in the news periodically. He's the chairman of Omaha Streetcar, uh, volunteering and giving back to the city and, and making our urban core a better place. Well, um, Trenton, this is uh, an interesting little news item. Uh, that popped up uh, in the World Herald late last night. I noticed it on Omaha.com. And it says uh, the the National Hockey League, the NHL, uh, the NHL commissioner publicly stated that there are five possible expansion cities. And he named them Houston, Atlanta, Cincinnati, Kansas City, and Omaha, Nebraska. No way. <laughs> way. Now, I would not hold your breath. Uh, because Omaha is a hell of a lot smaller market than Houston, Atlanta, and half the size of Cincinnati or Kansas City. But he identified these as, quote, cities who have showed interest in hosting a franchise, end quote. So what does that tell you? Someone in Omaha has reached out to the NHL about a hockey franchise. Who could it be? Does that mean that we'd have another arena? Mm, don't you think they'd probably play at the CHI? You would think, but most, yeah. of, most of the NHL have their own. You know, we have long said that Omaha is probably too small for a big time major league sports league, but that if it were to happen, the NBA and the NHL would probably be the best bets because football is too dependent on TV market, and our TV market's way too small. Baseball has uh, 81 home games, and we're not big enough for that. I know that I'm sure that that salaries are huge in the NHL, but it'd be interesting to see what it would take, the costs involved, not just in the real estate and the infrastructure, but the uh, roster and coaching and and just the franchise fees. Like the article said, uh, talked about the the last two NHL expansion teams. One was the Las Vegas team, which is really a good team, and I can't remember what the other one was, but they were about six hundred million dollars in franchise fees. And so, no way. you got to pay these players and all that sort of thing. But um, billion dollar sport. But then, but then the article kind of threw a curveball because it said these five possible expansion cities. Then the NHL commish said. But Salt Lake City has the strongest proposal, so so I guess it's really six. <laughs> he said five, but then he he, <laughs> added, he added a six one apparently. So don't hold your breath. But a city I, can dream. A city can dream, and I tell you what, whoever in Omaha is working on this or thinking about this, we salute you for being a big thinker and a visionary and uh, and being bold. Should start and, a rumor. And if you pull it off, whoever you are, if you pull it off. We will uh, we will be in awe, with, and we'll have you on the show, and we'll have you on the show, and we will admire you terribly uh, for years and years to come. So you got that going for you. So here's a little something fun. It's not Omaha, but I thought I'd just mention it real fast. Um, Oklahoma City uh, is uh, is a town that some Omahans know well. It's only about what a seven hour drive. Um, we get mistaken for it sometimes. 
Yeah, people think Omaha, Oklahoma. That happens a lot. And uh, interestingly, this is the story's been out and about for a while um, about a ridiculously tall skyscraper that is planned for Oklahoma City. Now, when it first came out last fall, the plan was to have it be the second tallest building in the United States and um, second only to the Freedom Tower, uh, where the Twin Towers used to stand in New York City. Well, since then, last month, uh, they decided to they need to go a little bigger. And so now the plan is to make it the tallest skyscraper in America, uh, the fifth or sixth tallest skyscraper on the planet. And this thing would be 1,907 feet tall. And um, it's gonna be 500 feet uh, per floor. And they, they chose they chose 1907 because that's the year Oklahoma became a state. And it would be condos. Now, I've been to Oklahoma City. It's growing fast. Um, and they have like an 800-foot skyscraper there already for Devon Energy Company that sticks out like a sore thumb because the other buildings are like maybe 300 feet or something like that. Right. But this thing, for a little bit of perspective, uh, would be um, uh, almost... Well, it'd be well over 1,200 feet taller than the new Mutual of Omaha skyscraper. So I would tell you, Jeff, that I think Omaha has a much better chance of getting an NHL team than Oklahoma City does a uh, uh, 1,900 square foot tower. Yeah, well, because the, the the question everyone has is because we've we've said this before: tall buildings cost exponentially more to build than regular buildings because there's just so much more cost that goes up with putting floors higher in the air. And uh, I don't know, are there enough people in the entire state of Oklahoma that would would buy a condo in a 1,900-foot building? But kind of interesting to think about. It's not like a place where people want a second home that's a condo. I mean, just for the view. I mean, oh, the view would be expansive (laughs) where you can see the wind come rushing down the plains. But with that, we're going to take our final break of the hour. Uh, When we come back, it'll be time for the Turner Construction Lightning Round. And there are a lot of things on the list, so you don't want to miss any of that. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All righty. Welcome back to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center. It is time for for your Turner Construction Lightning Round, brought to you appropriately by Turner Construction. They are, thank you, they are one of the nation's uh, best, most respected, largest, and experienced construction firms. So with them, if you are using Turner for one of your projects, you get the best of both worlds. You've got this massive firm with incredible resources and talented people that have experienced just about every challenge you could experience in the construction industry. But you mix that with a Nebraska office right here in Omaha with Omaha people, a lot of people who've like grew up in Nebraska, have lived their whole career in in Nebraska and uh, really care about the community. In fact, I go to some of these real estate things, uh, um, uh, construction functions, economic development stuff. You always see Turner uh, employees there because they love this community and they sponsor are sponsor a lot there. of stuff too, not just this uh, lightning round. So true, yeah. And they, they put out a great um, construction um, market report and all that. Um, so we strongly recommend Turner if you're thinking about doing a project. Um, you get the best of both worlds that small town feel with uh, worldwide international expertise, experience, and talent. All right, let's get into it. Insomnia Cookies is going to open in a space in the Capital District. The Capital District is that area near 10th and Capital Avenue that is anchored by a Marriott Hotel. Uh, Texas Day Brazil Steakhouse is there. So Insomnia Cookies is coming. Uh, they have more than 240 locations, heavy presence in college towns and in downtown areas. They're famous for delivering warm cookies late at night. Lighthouse Bar and Grill is opening in Blair. And uh, this business has three existing locations in Omaha, 132nd and West Center Road, 156th and Maple, and in Tiburon Point on South 168th Street. And Bon Vivant, Bon Vivant Suites will hold a ribbon cutting Monday at uh, 10748 Virginia Plaza in La Vista. Uh, this is a business that provides salon suites for hairstylists, estheticians, massage therapists, and the like. So the world's most admired companies uh, by Fortune Magazine came out, and our good friends at Berkshire Hathaway 
are number four in the world behind only Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Pretty cool. Uh, and probably the, their market caps are all up there, too. I think they're pretty respectable. Now, these were only big companies. Union Pacific made the list for the 18th time in the last 22 years and was the highest-ranked railroad on the list. So a couple of Omaha giant companies getting a good presence there. Throwback Arcade and Lounge finally decided they couldn't go on any longer, apparently. This is the controversial uh, two-level bar, 14th and Howard Street downtown, just west of the Old Market, closing permanently on February 16th. They came close to losing that liquor license. It's a very cool building, great landlord, uh, but, but tough business model. And uh, it's right next door to um, where where Maddie Grave and I represented the landlord, where Patrick's Market used to be and Flywheel, which is going to be Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and uh, it's going to be a great space for them. Congratulations to the owners and employees of Jim's Rib Haven at 38th and Ames. They have reopened almost a year after a really bad fire. Uh, a lot of fire damage last March, and so um, a lot of that, because that's a very good barbecue place, and a lot of people were worried that it might not come back, but they did open this week. They are back, and um, speaking of restaurants that are back, um, for those of you in Council Bluffs, Tasty Treat at uh, 13996 Wabash Avenue. This is one of those ice cream places that closes for a lot of the winter. Like Dairy Chef out yeah, of Elkhorn. Yeah, very similar to Dairy Chef in Elkhorn, you're right. Um, they're reopening for the season February 22nd, and they did some renovations during the off-season. So they're kind of like a sports team. They have an off-season. So Trenton and I both uh, tried the new Charlestons. I went there with uh, my kids and my parents uh, last night, had a, had a pretty good experience, and you went there earlier this week. Yeah, for a, a business lunch, and... and it's a convenient place. I like both Charlestons on Dodd Street. The new one is, is bigger. Definitely the, the parking seems a little bit tight, but they have more parking lots around there. And uh, I'm not sure if they got their liquor license. As, as of last night, they did not. And I, I will that say. That was not intentional. Yeah, food was uh, was right as Charleston's food always. And I've, Charleston's is one of those places to me. It's kind of like it's been around since, the, what, the mid-'90s. It's become kind of a comfort place for me. It's just like a good old standby. Good salad. But I was a little disappointed I couldn't get an old-fashioned last night. So hopefully they get that liquor license up uh, here pretty soon. But it's, it's big, it's nice, and, and if you're a Charleston's fan, go check it out. The music is playing, which means that we're done, but never fear. Next week is always around the corner. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics, Dingman's Collision Center, and don't forget Turner Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9, right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.